Organic matter is in my bed. It's alive and green and thin is dead. Organic matter turns into poop go. Stinky living sword, let the story be told. It breaks down on the ground. My life all around. Bacteria feeds, then they spread all around. And we add a slow Welcome back to the Slow Lane. My name is Indo, and today you're going to see the details of my grow setup. I have a 2x4x5 lung tent that is connected in series with a 5x9x8 grow tent. And in the 2x4, I have all of my environmental controls. I have a push pull configuration with a couple of T6 inline fans. We'll go over that in just a minute. But to start off with, I wanted to hit electrical safety. I know it's exciting, yeah, yeah, but it's important and I'll get right to the point. You need to know what circuit you're on. So you find the plugs that you're gonna use. You need to trace those back to your circuit panel and see how many amps you have on that circuit. You also need to know what else in the house is using that same circuit. You're gonna have 120 volts in the US and if you have a 15 amp circuit, that's 1800 watts total. You really don't want to push it all the way to the max though. You only want to go to 80%. That's the, that's the best practice guidelines for using a circuit on your circuit panel. So 1800 watts, you're looking at about 1440 watts for that one circuit. I have a garage that I grow in and it happens to have two circuits. So that means I have approximately 2880 to work with as far as wattage is concerned. Now, I also have some extra safety equipment in place. Your boy's a big ass nerd. Uh, so I've got some server grade uh, equipment in there. I've got a surge protector and a power distribution unit to make sure that no surges hit the equipment in there. And also to make sure that all the equipment is getting clean power. So if you have any questions about that, hit me up below. But uh, otherwise, I'm going to get back to the actual grow tent topic of this video today. And uh, we're going to go into it. So stick around and uh, take a look. Slow lane. Slow roll. Worm game strong made the sendo. Dolly on the disco. She didn't know. The slow lane on the scene. This is my main 5x9 tent. I do veg and flower for each run in here. The ducting across the ceiling is sucking air out of this tent and into the 2x4 lung tent and also filtering the air at the same time. The end of this run goes into the top of the 2x4 tent and connects to a T6 inline fan from AC Infinity. You will notice there is a second filter on the far end of this tent. This dumps directly into the lung room when needed. Otherwise, the two tents remain sealed because I use CO2. The 2x4 lung tent acts as an environmental control hub to keep conditions steady. The air moves between the lung tent and the main tent with a second T6 that is pushing air from the 2x4 back into the 5x9 tent. This air cycle essentially makes the 2x4 act as if it had a much larger air volume, allowing for the dehumidifier in here to really work efficiently. This particular dehumidifier is a 70 pint and only pulls 360 watts at full steam, so I would recommend. All right, so my garage is my lung room. I've got an extra dehumidifier in here and a window unit air conditioner. The garage doesn't have a drain, so I have a tube and pump system that collects all runoff and sends it under the garage door and out into an outdoor drain. For controls, I'm running mostly AC Infinity gear. I have a 67 controller in the lung tent for the pull T6 fan, a 69 Pro in the lung tent for the push T6 and the main tent probe, and then another 69 Pro that controls a third T6 
in the main tent that does the direct exhausting into the lung room. I do this when I need a quick drop in humidity. Usually this happens right around lights out to make sure that the dew point is dialed in. Okay, let's talk lighting. I've got two Medic Grow LEDs in this tent. One Smart 8 and one Fold 800. They're both controlled by the Medic Grow controller right now. One quick note on this, the Fold 800 works just fine with an AC Infinity controller, but the Smart 8 line, they do not. This is because they have a red LED boost. If you have any sort of spectrum control on your light, it's very likely that the AC Infinity controls, even with the adapter, will not work, so be cautious. For latent flower, I run three micro 310 nanometer UVB lights spread across the tent. And of course, I use a PAR meter to dial in light levels. You'll find a link to the one I use down in the description. I don't think you'll find a more accurate and lower priced option than this. This is a quantum sensor also. I run two CO2 tanks, a 20 pound and a 50 pound. I run these with an Inkbird controller. It's old school. It keeps levels around 1000 ppm. Gets the job done. I use this from mid veg all the way through late flower until about the last week or two. Okay, airflow. Fans. There are six circulation fans keeping air moving evenly around this tent. I've got two carbon filters for the tent that I mentioned earlier. One for the constant loop and one for the exhaust. It generally just runs for that 15 minutes, but it works. Let's talk watering. I use EcoWit soil moisture sensors. I have one deep version for the 4x4 bed and also an aerometer to monitor the water levels in the bottom of the tent. I've got an auto pot system with a 25 gallon reservoir. It's set up for hands-free gravity fed watering. The 4x4 bed is fed by an EcoWit WFC01 irrigation controller. It's connected to drip line, a fertigation tank, and then to this bigot in the wall through a 25 PSI regulator. There's also an inline filter. That means that I can theoretically leave the grow space for very long periods of time without much concern. I do have wise cameras set up as well for remote monitoring. Finally, there is a Boogie Blue Plus RV filter that's in line for all of my watering.